how religion, well, is heavily involved in the building of this three-legged global stool of big government, big business, and religion, turning churches into community organizers. All right, John D. Rockefeller, he said, would that I had the power to bring to your minds the vision as it unfolds before me. I see all denominational emphasis set aside. I see the church molding the thought of the world as it has never done before, leading in all great movements as it should. I see it literally establishing the kingdom of God on earth, In quote. Well, of course, when he says the church, he doesn't know it, but he's talking about a false church. And indeed, we are today dealing with a false dominant global church. Much of the persecution that we are and have experienced over the last, uh, I would say, 15 years has largely come from people who claim to be in the church, modern day evangelicalism. Some of, if you go online and you search my name, you'll see that some of my harshest critics have been self-professing pastors or evangelists. Many of them are false teachers. They preach a hyper-Calvinism. They, they teach some of them a dominion theology. Some of them teach a social justice, whatever their different issue is. But almost to a person, every one of them is, to one degree or another, a false teacher. Now, some of them may not like that, particularly those that are into their extreme hyper-Calvinism. But that's exactly what they are. They're teaching a false gospel. They're teaching a false theology. And I would say, in fact, many of them in the hyper-Calvinist world uh, are teaching a, um, really, I would say, a Roman Catholicism that's been repackaged for the Protestant world. As John Calvin said, he could recreate his entire theology from the writings of Augustine or, or Augustine, however you say it. I say Augustine. So again, most of my harshest critics have come out of the evangelical world, and that's largely because of the fact that today the evangelical world as we know it is largely become a false dominant church, and it's happening on a global scale. Just this last week in the United Arab Emirates, we had the opening of a Catholic church, a Jewish temple, and a mosque. How many of you saw that? I dealt with that earlier this week. You'll find a full uh, segment on that at WVWTV.com, WVWTV.com. Uh, and I interviewed Dr. Rob Linstead on what we knew was coming, what was being constructed, what we talked about, and now it's officially open in the United Arab Emirates. And that is these three so-called houses of worship. Again, it's a Catholic um, uh, church, a mosque, and a Jewish temple. And that is promoting an interfaith dialogue, interfaith religion. Interfaith dialogue is going to lead to a one world church. Now, why is this important? Because I'm about to take you to Revelation chapter 17. And I'm going to show you that a one world global church, a false dominant global church, is in Revelation chapter 17, verse 1. And it's what the Antichrist will use to help bring himself to power. Isn't it uh, common that politicians, particularly when it comes time to run for office, get religion? Many of them can be the biggest scoundrels, but when it comes time to gain public acceptance and to build their coalition, they start all of a sudden wanting to be religious, seen going to church, carrying the biggest Bible. Uh, one Southern governor, Bill Clinton, was known for wanting to be in the choir and be dead center in the choir because uh, he, it was on television. He was setting up to run for governor. Many people have used religion as they run for office. So why would we be shocked that the Antichrist won't also use religion to gain global acceptance and to thus use a false dominant church to eventually set himself up as the entity to be worshipped? And in fact, he'll do away with this false dominant church out of jealousy and turn that religious system toward himself. Revelation 17 describes this. But before we get there, we first have to understand this. The goal is to destroy traditional Christianity. What did Karl Marx say, the father of Marxism? My object in life is to dethrone God and destroy capitalism. What was the first one, though? To dethrone God. So much of what we see happening today is about destroying Christianity. 
It's either perverting it, mixing it with psychology, mixing it with social justice, socialism, mixing it with occultism. We looked a few weeks ago how so many within evangelicalism today, according to one survey, embrace New Age concepts. Many of them embrace the idea of karma, as we saw, the idea of good karma, bad karma, uh, the idea that your good deeds can outweigh your bad deeds and you can uh, be evolved upward. Uh, over in the uh, Eastern world, in the Hinduism, that's often the other way. They, they are very uh, confident that they could be going down. Their bad karma could outweigh their good karma, and they become a, a cow or a rat, which is why, of course, we see poverty and starvation, because they won't kill these rats and eat the grain that they need to feed to the cattle. But here in the Western world, they often go the positive side. Good karma, good deeds will outweigh the bad karma, the bad deeds, and you'll spiritually evolve upwards. And we saw a survey that shows that now that is embraced by many within evangelicalism. Many, according to this survey, within so-called evangelicalism today, within Christianity today in America, are embracing New Age doctrines. Well, this is helping to set the stage for not only a one-world religious system, but it's being introduced by people that I believe specifically penetrate our church denominations and penetrate our church seminaries in order to transform Christianity. The Jesuits have been known to do this. The Jesuits have been known to penetrate other religions for a counter-reformation. One of the most well-known Jesuits, of course, was Teilhard de Chardin. Teilhard de Chardin was a Jesuit priest who's also known as the father of the New Age movement. He greatly influenced the United Nations and some of its leaders. So there's a goal to hijack Christianity to turn Christianity away from biblical truth toward man-centered ideas and even occultism. Why? In order to do away with the influence and impact of the church, of Christians, on the culture, including all areas of life. Law, science, economics, history, family, social issues, education, borders, national security. So there's an outright destruction going on, but there's also been an infiltration going on. That's why I wrote the book, Before the Coming Religious Reich, which is entitled The Coming Religious Trojan Horse, or it was just called Trojan Horse, Religious Trojan Horse. So Religious Trojan Horse was the book that was written before The Coming Religious Reich. Once you have a religious Trojan Horse and you implement or infiltrate evangelicalism, you can then neuter it, turn it away from its mission and purpose. John D. Rockefeller saying here, I'm going to change the mission of, of the church away from the spiritual and more toward the natural away from the spiritual and more toward the natural, away from the biblical gospel and to a social gospel, a social justice. Of course, we know one of the fathers of the social gospel movement was a man that was funded, that was funded by David Rockefeller, the father of the social gospel movement. He also worked with another gentleman uh, that was known as Red. Red. He actually had the nickname Red in his middle name, because he was a known Marxist, a known Marxist. But the father of the social gospel movement uh, was being pushed by none other than David Rockefeller. So should we be shocked that David Rockefeller saying, hey, we're going to turn the attention of the church toward uh, social justice? That's what he's saying. And then building the kingdom of God on earth. Well, we know that that's not the job of the church. Uh, Jesus says, my in John, the book of John, chapter 18, my kingdom is not of this world. It's not from here. If it were, my disciples would fight to keep me from being turned over to the Jews. So we don't build it here. Daniel 2 says God brings his kingdom. We don't build it. God brings it. So there's a difference between the idea of building the kingdom of God, which social justice has gotten into, or dominion theology. We've got to take all the power centers of the earth and the world, and then once we've Christianized the world, then Christ can return. Till then, Christ is pretty much sitting in heaven, wringing his hands, waiting for us to get our act together and and to take over the world with a Christian theocracy. I am not for a Christian theocracy, because our goal, first of all, is not to build the kingdom of God on earth. However, that doesn't negate evangelism. And yet, the Great Commission is what? To make disciples. That's two parts. That's evangelism and discipleship. But here's David Rockefeller, or excuse John D. Rockefeller, saying he's going to get the church to focus not on making disciples, the proclamation of the gospel, evangelizing people, but building a political power structure on earth 
to build the kingdom of God on earth? Well, if they're not building the kingdom of God, you have to ask yourself, what are they building? And what they're building is the kingdom of Antichrist. Make no mistake about it. Now, to do this again, they must first infiltrate true Christianity, get it off its course and away from its true mission, and have them be diverted into helping them with their social justice, social gospel movement. How many churches today, 20 years ago, 25 years ago, were solid evangelical churches? Today, they are nothing but social justice churches. The pastors have become community organizers. They're into pop psychology. They're into positive thinking, if you will, right? But they're not what they used to be. Those churches are now neutered. They don't have to, the globalists don't have to worry about those churches interrupting their plan because they've been neutered with poison, a false mission statement. Then, if they could not only infiltrate them, but have them come join them in their cause, all the better. So remember, Karl Marx said, my object in life is to dethrone God. So the globalists have been out to penetrate the churches in America and turn them from their real mission. Then, those churches that will not conform, that will not bow down to the dictates of cultural Marxism and political correctness, what are they left to do with them? All they can do now is basically persecute those. Persecute those remaining churches into silence. Persecute them and prosecute them. 